Hey, have you been feeling stressed out lately? Feeling down, anxious, angry? Well, there just happens to be a counseling service that could be right for you. BetterHelp is an online therapeutic resource that offers licensed professional counselors that you can access from the comfort of your own home. Just go to betterhelp.com slash cinemasins, answer a few questions about how you're feeling, and they'll match you to the counselor who's right for you. Everything works through your own online personal counseling room and is tailored to your convenience. If you've been struggling or could just use some professional advice, head on over to betterhelp.com slash cinemasins today. If this many people are walking to their seats as the soundproof wall is lowering, then this whole community needs a lesson in promptness. Ten minutes early is five minutes late, people. Here's a sin for every person in this section that, upon finding their girlfriend wife's seat, said, Look, I finally found your G-spot. <laughs> Terrorists are a dick to the cello. To show you I really mean business, I will f*** up your sheet music. Take that, culture. I can't figure out how the gas works this quickly, or why it's knocking out some of the gunmen, but then some other gunmen came prepared with gas masks. Well, at least this will be the last time this movie confuses me. We live in a twilight world. We live in a twilight world. Quick, say the response code. It's and we pledge our loyalty to Team Jacob. Just don't let Neil hear you. You have two minutes. Make up your mind. He has exactly 16 seconds. No friends at dusk, huh? You'll do. Get him to the rally point. So begins a discombobulating journey when you watch this movie in a theater and get no subtitles for the English-speaking characters. You'll constantly be asking, what they just say? Who's that? What just happened? And, ironically, can I rewind this through most of the movie? All of that and you're still worried you might get COVID watching this thing. There is zero chance he finds and retrieves every single bomb in this giant room in two minutes. This is a room full of future corpses and the movie knows it. So the bullet hole appears before Neil shoots his gun and saves the protagonist. So if you're in forward time, when does this bullet hole first appear? If you were to live in inverted time from this moment, the bullet hole would be there forever. To the days the opera house was being constructed, or deconstructed from your perspective. Meaning nobody wanted to fix a mysterious bullet hole in the seating area for years! And that's just poor opera house management. Be sure to make note of this little tag on the back of Robert Pattinson's backpack for like one second so that you can understand what happened in this scene two and a half hours later. But why doesn't this explosion take out the floor right above these people? Movie wants me to think he saved all these lives, but he did not. All I have for you is a gesture in combination with a word, tenant. Rolls tenants lore? Protagonist does push-ups during a Christopher Nolan movie cliche. You're here for what, you're here for how. And by how, I actually mean what, considering I will give you no clear scientific explanation, and instead just show you a bunch of cool reversary backseat stuff. As I understand it, we're trying to prevent World War III. Nuclear holocaust. Wow, did I just get inverted to 1995? Didn't John David Washington's dad talk about nuclear holocaust and Crimson Tide? You have to have dropped it. Um, okay, but just a few seconds ago, he caught a reverse bullet in the gun without any kind of voodoo mind gymnastics. He just pointed and the bullet did the thing. So why all of a sudden are we dealing with psychological prerequisites? Pushing the trigger isn't even the correct term. Don't try to understand it. Oh, f*** you. This is just the straw explanation and looper all over again. And I'm tired of being told I'm the bad guy for trying to understand things. Explain it fully or don't even try, because I'm tired of putting up with your half-hearted attempts to placate me. Either s*** out a comprehensive theory of time or get off the temporal pot. You're not shooting the bullet. You're catching it. Whoa. Why is this the whoa moment? He already said he understood what was going on, so catching the bullet at this point should be totally logical. An inverted bullet passing through your body would be devastating. Yeah, I mean, regular bullets pass through bodies all the time, and those don't do Where did you get them? I came with the wall. And did the casing come with the wall too? And the gun? Every single microscopic piece of the wall that it needs to rebuild itself? I'm beginning to think this concept may have more holes than that bullshit reverse entropy target stone does. Look. I'm not saying I'm again here. Thing I said at the Hollywood 27 in July of 1998 somehow makes it into the script. Now that we know what to look for, we're finding more and more inverted material. And what exactly do you look for? Do you run around the world seeing if you can Yoda objects into your hands? So what happens if he opens his hand now? If that piece is moving backwards in time, would it fall? How does gravity still gravity in reverse entropy? This is about the clearest example of a this works in the history of things working. There's no one at the other end. No one is going to help you anyway. But it does set off an alarm that calls the cops, who wait long enough for the protagonist to have this casual sit-down conversation with Priya. I started to doubt you. 
Hope you don't mind. Nolan forces Nigel Powers here into his movie so much, it's like he's addicted to a drug. I even heard him refer to him once as Michael Caine, but I might have misunderstood. I'm all about some Michael Caine's position, but even this gets confusing when you listen to it. He tells the protagonist about the town in which Sater grew up in the 70s. Then he tells him that they detected a detonation in that very same area two weeks ago on the same day as the opera siege. After that, he says, Sater emerged from this blank spot on the map with ambition and enough money to buy his way into the British establishment. Through his wife. So now it sounds like Sater emerged from his hometown two weeks ago with all this money, but he means decades earlier. Then we hear about how he gets into the British establishment using this money, but then it's implied he needed his British wife to do that. And can we just get to the unwrecking car already? Also, I'm not sure how a movie with back-to-back -back scenes of nothing but exposition can still be this convoluted and confusing, but I'm sure it's a sin. But in this world where someone is claiming to be a billionaire, Brooks Brothers won't cut it. Bro bro shaming. I am not sure how a movie with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back scenes of nothing but exposition can still be this convoluted and confusing, but I'm sure it's a sin. Also, this is the second fancy expositional meal the protagonist has been to, and we never once see him take a bite. I'm not asking him to go full pit or anything, but at least nibble a biscuit, you sadist. Catherine tells the protagonist that a Rippo doesn't walk or talk anymore, and oh my god, how did the protagonist intel whip on the fact that this guy couldn't walk or talk anymore? Also, a Rippo? Come on. Yeah, it's opera backwards, and it's all part of the Seder Square, which contains the word tenet, but who gives a sh I guess it's kind of neat. Does the minor character Arepo have anything to do with the opera except being neat? Ow! Cheese grater assault. <laughs> the music drowns this guy out, and the subtitle says, imperceptible, because the movie is doing this on purpose for effect, but that subtitle could basically be used for 35% of the dialogue in this movie, even the stuff that isn't purposely drowned out. This f***ing guy punches numbers on the keypad in plain view of everyone. <laughs> Lucky for the tenant plan. You got something. Not gonna like it. You want to crash a plane? Did he wait all the way until they were walking around town to bring that up? I guess I can understand him not wanting to say, I want to crash a plane while they were on that shuttle bus. But they're walking around in public saying this shit, so there's not much of a difference. We can't play it to prove it, but the score here is so opening scene of Dark Knight that I was positive James Newton Howard was the composer. But no, it's the new star on the block, Ludwig Göransson. He's great, but damn, this almost sounds like Nolan put on a filler track from Dark Knight that never got replaced. That's some piss poor chloroforming right there. It barely even restrains him and doesn't even fully cover the guy's mouth. Plus, it takes at least five minutes of inhaling it to even do anything. People are simply not this easy to chloroform. So I've heard. And this is why pallets of gold are never, under any circumstances, transported loose like this. <laughs> this is my favorite stunt extra ever. He's selling that double take and jump so hard, you may actually think he's in a parody. Which, now that I mention it. Did a hand. Actually, yes. What the f*** did he do? He just hit one button. What the f***ing f***? Yes, this fight is badass, but this moment right here highlights the main problem anytime something or someone forward interacts with something or someone backwards. You see how Mr. Forward jumps backwards and then mysteriously backs up in the middle of the fight as Mr. Backwards crawls towards him. There's no reason for him to do this if he truly has free will here, and yet he does. Because of this development, I'm now fairly convinced that all of this story is actually fiction. This feels very ex machina-ish, with the nearly exploding plane and engine sucking the reverse protagonist out of the vault, just in time to prevent the forward protagonist from finding out that it's actually future him behind the mask, or just straight up shooting his future self. And yes, when he's in reverse time, the backwards plane engine explosion is what blows him into the vault in the first place. I just choose to believe it's an out for the filmmakers, which is what it is. What happened to the other guy? Took care of him. Well, no reason to ask any questions beyond that. I am not curious. This article headline is about heavier motorcycle helmets, but after the first sentence, the text appears to be about the worship of elements and fire deities, which, you'll have to admit, is only tangentially related. I ask again, who is he? Movie takes almost an hour to properly bra. You so? The protagonist tells Sater he knows where the final piece of the algorithm is, and instead of just waiting until after dinner or finding some private place to talk for a second, he decides to wait another 12 hours so the protagonist can tell him during a sailboat race. And so we get to the whole reason for this sailing scene. Catherine pushes Sater off the boat, and the protagonist saves him and scores friendship points. It's completely unplanned, but necessary to get Sater to partner up with the protagonist, and it's some bull****. Of course, the young before he's rich Sater is working on a dreary, rainy day, so we can't see this document more clearly. And of course, the movie couldn't just stay on the document a little bit longer so that we could register that it has his name on it. Yes, I eventually figured it out, but why did this reveal need to be so obscure? If I can't have you... No one else can. I'm not sure what frequency Kenneth is operating on here, but you can probably find it on your dial somewhere near Loves the Taste of the Scenery 0.7 FF. 
Blink and you'll miss it. These are the materials the future sends to Seder. Remember when Gary Larson did that one Far Side cartoon called Cow Tools and nobody knew what it meant? This is Christopher Nolan's Cow Tools. Dead drops. He buries his time capsule, transmits the location, then digs it up to collect the inverted materials they sent. I understand time to be a loop in tenet. Seder sends his coordinates to the future, and then the future sends their materials back through the reverse time portal. But this movie would be so much better if it explained the exact nature of the process. Somewhere quiet, with no loud-ass score blaring over it. If Doc Brown came in here with a chalkboard and showed the process, I'd send the shit out of that. But at least I'd know the nature of how Seder's relationship with the future works. Not wearing a tie clip, or at least tucking your dangler. Here's a fast car that doesn't look fast. Four heavy vehicles. The movie spends almost every moment between set pieces with expositional dialogue setting up upcoming set pieces. It doesn't help that these set piece setup pieces are also cut to pieces. Look at me! Villain says look at me really loud in a Christopher Nolan movie cliche. You don't negotiate with a tiger. You admire a tiger until he turns on you and you feel it's true. King nature! I still think it's f***ed up that they don't have to pay the Tiger King any royalties because they changed his story just enough to avoid the lawsuits. This car's side mirror is busted because an inverted vehicle will run into it later and make it whole again, but the car itself isn't inverted, so where did the damage come from? Does this mean if you got in a fight with an inverted person and they knocked out one of your teeth, that you would not have teeth until they punched them into your head? I know the movie nods at this with a reverse wound later, but any impact that doesn't self-heal completely breaks reality. Watch everything. Give me all the details. Yeah, give him the details! You wouldn't want him to be confused while watching the plot unfold. I think it's beyond hilarious that the Ukrainians entrusted to guard the material think everything is okay as long as the transport doesn't deviate from its set course. Awfully convenient for people asking why don't the cops and or army come in to stop this? These pieces of the algorithm are the most McGovern-y thing to ever McGuffin in the history of McGuffinville. <laughs> yeah! Okay, so after that super cool moment, why don't we see Sater's SUV right next to the car? Since later we know it's the SUV that causes the wreck. The protagonist makes it look way too easy to throw a pelican case from a moving car, bounce it off the hood of another car, and into the arms of a person in yet another car. Not only that, Sater and his crew make it look way too easy to transfer between moving cars. <laughs> this shot shows they have absolutely no time to stop the car from crashing into the traffic ahead, and the protagonist takes an additional 16 seconds to get inside the car, and somehow slow a speeding vehicle down with his hand on the brake stretching as far as he can Go. The subtitle here simply says, Protagonist Grunting, and I think Christopher Nolan has found the title of his eventual autobiography. It's befuddling, yet maybe wonderful? Catherine, who is not inverted, is being led by Seder, who is inverted. Cat's experiencing some weird inverted sh all around her, and she's moving forward through time. She was taken from the warehouse, thrown into an SUV, and driven back to the warehouse, all by people looking like they're being rewound by Adam Sandler and Click. Then Seder goes into the past and encounters past Cat, who is still not inverted, but if you don't realize she never gets inverted until after the cavalry arrives, your brain will be actual mashed potatoes trying to figure it out. In the end, I'm gonna give Mad respect. I'm impressed this asshole kept up with so many moving parts. They're running a temporal pincer movement. Oh. Let's go. I actually love that they don't try to over-explain the magic turnstiles. I do, but shouldn't there be at least a little weirdness as whatever magic happens in this turnstile happens? They've mentioned the oxygen isn't breathable if it's reversed, so does this mean every single object, including the oxygen, changes instantaneously? I mean, I can't even promise that being in inverted time won't affect this video itself, so certainly someone in there would notice something strange happening in their neighborhood. Also, speaking of the oxygen, how do they keep all the inverted oxygen from mixing with the regular oxygen? They obviously have a double door system here to change it out, but there was nothing like that in the Oslo turnstile, which means inverted oxygen is just out there mixing with the regular stuff. And yet the Surgeon General remains suspiciously silent. This is cowboy Agree, extremely important person who we've just met 90 minutes into the movie. 100% agree, but no one's got to know one, I guess. Well, I'm going, so any tips will be welcome. Wheeler, brief him. I'm all for giving another actor a shot to say some lines in a movie, but why the f*** can't Aaron Taylor Johnson brief him? Well, if your particles come into contact... What? Annihilation. That would be bad, right? I mean, sure, it was abstract, but the demon bear was terrifying, and honestly, even with the open ending, it still made more sense than this mess. She tells the protagonist gravity will appear normal, and no. Wrong. Sorry for another bit of paradox is paradox here, but we've also seen inverted objects be dropped, which would feel to the object like it's defying gravity. So basically, if someone drops you off a building in inverted time, to you it would feel as if you were suddenly thrown into the air 30 stories and then grabbed by someone at the top. My point is I'm not allowing you to get away with this gravity will feel normal sh and I'm adding three sins for the oversimplification. 
but what if he decides at this point not to finish this step? If the water is already responding, does he lose free will? Neil would say he has to finish this step because what happens always happens. But now we are into free will versus determinism and the paradox of their cohabitation. I swear I really dig this movie, but it's a confusing pile of aneurysm the second you start to actually try and reason it out. Tracking and driving. Get the other sections of the algorithm to the hypocenter. I can't believe this asshole mentions the hypocenter during this sequence. I guess if he doesn't, there's no way to save the world, but it's an incredibly weird thing to bring up when your main focus is trying to find the last piece of your WMD. Okay, so we find out that the protagonist threw the metal box into the car that the reverse protagonist is driving. But if you take a close look at the protagonist's throw, you'll find that he totally misses the opening in the window. You can see part of the material fall outside of the car door, and they had to make an edit to make it look like it was perfectly thrown. You did get my pulse above 130. No one's done that before. Not even my wife. Being proud of your boring sex life. Why does this fire seem completely normal when we are in inverted perspective. I'll wait. Just kidding, I have to move on. There's still an hour of this nonsense left. Also, why does the fire even happen in reverse time if the conditions are such that it chills instead of heats? Seems like the inverse air would have a say on whether the fire could even start in the first place. The protagonist asks Neil if they're here now, does that mean they've succeeded? And all I've got to say is, yep, end of movie. No more tension. <laughs> Also, we should probably talk about spending long periods of time inverted, because... And you may be shocked to hear this, I have questions. Let's talk about eating. If you have inverted food, you should be fine, but that's a lot of food to invert in store. And what happens to your sh which I'm assuming is now also inverted. How would you even flush it? You have to store it and then uninvert it to dispose of it later? Look, either Nolan shows me a giant barrel of crap soon or I'm calling shenanigans. I've literally studied this fight forwards and backwards, and while it's obvious they shot and compiled both fights individually, for the most part, it works. It's mind-blowing stuff, and well worth another sin off. Go. In a movie this perplexing, I really could have done without this edit. I'm already having a hard time figuring out who's going forwards, who's going backwards, who went back in time, but now are moving forwards. Things that are happening concurrently, but in different directions. People who are moving forward, but find themselves on the inverted side of the turnstile. And the very nature of time and space e equals MC squared, the Charlie Day, Zach Galifianakis, and Lady with all the equations showing up on the screen meme converging. I know Neil is supposedly standing in a place where no one could see him, but to see the protagonist and himself, he'd have to be a little bit visible, which he was not when this happened earlier. You're familiar with the Manhattan Project? Man, this movie really is explodey, explainy, explainy, fighty, explainy, explainy, drivey, explainy, reverse drivey, explainy, explainy, reverse fighty, explainy, explainy, reverse explodey, isn't it? And as cool as that structural palindrome is, there's a bit too much explainy to create enough excitey. I don't like Oppenheimer. She rebels, splitting the algorithm into nine sections and hiding them the best place you can think of. Why couldn't they just be destroyed? Every evil in movie universes seems to get buried with no imagination whatsoever that they could be discovered. You want Seder to get the last section. That is the only way he'll bring together the other eight. But he can't do anything if he doesn't have the last section. Who cares if he has the other eight? This is so frustrating. You told me about a holiday where you let him feel loved. Vietnam. You mean the trip where he tells you that he knows the Goya was a fake and he's going to control everything about how you interact with your son? That's the holiday he wants to revisit? I went ashore show with Max and he flew off, but I don't know what day it was. It's the 14th, 10 days ago. It was in Ukraine. This takes place on the same day a detonation is detected in a city in northern Siberia where Seder once lived, in a city he controls. Either he knows that he's eventually going to be responsible for that detonation and failed to end the world, or he just flat out wasn't curious about a military op happening in one of his places of interest. I love how we went from, wait, we've got an inverter too, to, there are three giant built-in inverters on our ship, in the course of three minutes movie time with no explanation. Also, why would you use three single-use inverters in assembly line style, instead of the turnstiles, which can convert a dozen at a time? This is setting up some sort of amusement park line queue experience, isn't it? We're red team moving forward. In order to distinguish the teams, you'll wear these. <laughs> As if all these humans will actually be able to comprehend what's about to happen. I don't care how much you train. You put this amount of human into this complex of a situation, it will be foobar in a matter of seconds. This is an episode of Keystone Time Cops just waiting to happen. You understand? I do not. Do you want to have any idea who they're shooting at or what they're shooting? I guess when you have a concept as cool as this, you don't have to give faces to the people defending this town. But once again, protagonists shoot vaguely at people off screen, and I swear to God we never see the people shooting back. Oh, those are humans, maybe. This final pincer movement operation is as euphoric as it is insane. It's like my first orgasm. I've never experienced anything like it before, and I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but boy, am I having fun. What? I'm not even sure if that's a sin or a removal. And by this point, you aren't either. Three, two, one, fire! Ooh. Huh? Huh? What? Ah! 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 Ooh. Uh? That said, I'd love to know what the objectives are for these teams in this mission. 
Is it strictly clearing the area so that the Splinter team can go down and get the algorithm? I guess it is, but I have no idea why certain buildings just get blowed up during it. Again, we never really see any antagonists, and we don't see the antagonist's abilities, regular or inverse, just a bunch of seemingly meaningless destruction. The way the world ends. Not with a bank, but a winter. Stealing quotes from Southland Tales, or T.S. Eliot. I don't know which came first, just dang it. Not clear! I repeat! Not clear! Copy that. I repeat! Not clear! So, radios that have a range from northern Siberia all the way to Vietnam while running underground at a nuclear test site? I know we're in a sci-fi movie with time travel, but this is even harder to believe. So Neil sees this charge being set and decides to immediately divert to try and chase them down and warn them. But why? Isn't the whole point of the pincer that the blue team is gathering this info for the red team's briefing? Why wouldn't he just find a way to transfer that info to Ives with all the other info that they're gathering? Somewhere, sometime, a man in a crystalline tower throws a switch. Long distance monologuing. How could they want to kill us? Because their oceans rose and their rivers ran dry. Let me get this straight. They have the technology in the future to figure out time travel, but they didn't have any f***ing clue how to reverse climate change? <laughs> and I'm sorry, this irreversible damage occurs centuries later? Seems a little optimistic. Also, this is the type of world that really could have used a Matthew McConaughey to morse code a solution to Earth's problems to his daughter through a bookcase. My greatest sin was to bring a son into a world I knew was ending. Bringing a son into a world you know is ending. All right, so Inverted Neil came down here and saved the protagonist's life. But what's breaking my brain is how long he's been lying there. If he died inverted, then his decomposition would happen into the past, meaning many years ago he was a skeleton in this very spot that has continued to recompose slowly over time. And where was that skeleton before this building was constructed? And since skeletons don't decompose, how long ago did this skeleton appear and why? I'm sure there's some sort of explanation for how Neil got down here when there's a cave-in waiting for him at the entrance of this tunnel, but I'm not having it. Remember, the cave-in happens when the protagonist and eyes trip over the wire, setting off an explosion. For Inverted Neil to get inside, he would have had to wait for them to untrip over the wire for the tunnel to be clear again. But the protagonist and Ives would no longer be in the hypo center. They'd be back outside the tunnel. Sater survives this. Just long enough so that his dead man switch doesn't end the world. Actually, that shit's never explained. I guess they just got lucky. Sweet. I couldn't do it. I couldn't let him die thinking you'd bust. I knew you'd find a way. Knew you'd find a way. What was it about if he dies, the world ends that you didn't understand? It's not like there's some sort of amazing quick thinking you could do once the kill switch is flipped. Okay, what in the f***ing f***? How'd they find Sater's body and tie him to the boat so fast? We hide it. We end our lives. From my parallax view, you guys are making the same mistake that the scientists made. Can and place, three o'clock. Probably nothing. Posterity. Can and place, three o'clock. Probably nothing. So, wait, she... What? Saw a car and decided to make that posterity call because she was kind of maybe suspicious? Jesus, that's lucky. So my guess is that originally this little boy was supposed to be Neil, and the final shot would be a little orange string with a washer popping out of the back of his backpack. But even Nolan knew he couldn't make that make any sense. So here's a sin for Nolan's lack of omnipotence. We were counting on you, Christopher. We were all counting on you. Because I was inverted. <coughs> No, he was, man. It was a really great move. She was a bird. Giving him the bird. Man, this was a wild year, wasn't it? Even in the best of times, many people experience unhappiness, stress, anxiety, family conflicts, and many more issues that affect their mental health. If there's something that is preventing you from achieving your goals due to some of these problems, there's an online counseling service that we highly recommend, BetterHelp.com. BetterHelp is convenient, user-friendly, and a great way to get counseling from the comfort of your own home. Right from the jump, they'll assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional counselor. Everything is there in your own personalized counseling room. The ability to schedule your appointments, message your counselor, exchange useful information between appointments and to send hilarious cat-based memes if you so desire. So, if you're looking for some professional counseling that could help you on your journey to health and happiness, go to betterhelp.com slash cinemasins for a unique offer today. We love it, and we use it. How can it move before I touch it? People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. This is Ron Stallworth calling. I saw your advertisement in the Colorado Springs Gazette. I'm interested in receiving some reading materials from you. Started without you. Hope you don't mind. Damn! I'm thirsty. I want a beer. What about you? You want a beer? Every citizen is born exactly as designed by the community. We control the DNA of our progeny, germinating them in birthing pods. Hey, Larry, where's the forklift? Forklift! It's over there with the baggage water! Look out! Oh! 
What happened to the other guy? Took care of him. Take care of him? No, man. Just take her out, you know. Show her a good time, make sure she don't get lonely. It's very gratifying to watch a man you don't like try to pull his own balls out of his throat before he chokes. Oh, my. You sir? If your friend is a good sailor and the craft is seaworthy, yes, I will go sailing. Yeah, let's go sailing. Ah! <laughs>